Okay, so in this video I'm going to cover another two elements. I'm covering the date element here from the element uh, selector and I'm covering the timer. So first I'll cover the date. The date element is it, it's incredibly simple and it's not it's, it's somewhat useful. Basically it lets you hard code a date into your app and WatchKit automatically takes over formatting that date for different uh, regions, uh, time zones, and uh, whatnot. Uh, over here, I have the attributes inspector for the date element. Um, and we have uh, two options in the format. So the first one is standard. The second one is custom. If we go into custom, so as we can see, we've got sort of this markup, uh, month, day, year, hour, minute, and the uh, AM, PM, or so you can uh, lay out your own date, how you want the date to be displayed uh, this way, or you can just use the standard. As you can see, the date we have a uh, short, medium, long, full. As you can see, full is that. Uh, you can see all the different options being previewed. And uh, again, time, medium, long, full. And of course, you can set what this date is. You can set what this date is, what date has been displayed by this object down here in the preview. So you can go up, you can go down. That obviously is days, months, years, uh, hours, minutes, seconds, and uh, meridian. So really, to sum up what this object actually does is it lets you store and hard code a date and then it takes settings, uh, that date and those settings that you set out, and it displays the date in whatever way is native to the user. So in most of the developed world, it will display a date, day, month, year. In America, it will display it month, day, year. So it's just a way to natively display a date to a user. Um, the date also comes with two objects uh, that you probably, to get the most out of the date, you probably won't actually use it. Um, there's a set time zone, so natively uh, the date object will take whatever time you put in and uh, convert it to the user's time zone, I think from your own time zone. Um, but if you wanted to set it to another time zone, you can use the set time zone. And the set calendar, which again is used for that uh, layout, so the day and the month for Americans or you can uh, set your own calendar there. Now the next object I want to talk about in this video is the one you can actually do things with and that is the timer. So the timer lets you input a date object and then displays a countdown of units. As you can see there's units over here. Displays a countdown to that date object. So for this video I'm going to put a button in and I'm going to, whenever you press this button, extend the timer. So object, control, link it up. Uh, we want this to be an action. Timer button. So to do that, if we go command click, we can see we have set date, start and stop. Pretty explanatory what they all do. And down here, we're gonna go timer outlet dot set date and then we're going to go ns date and we want to go time intervals from now let's go uh, this is of course seconds so let's go 60 seconds 60 seconds so this will set the timer to be 60 seconds in the future and then we can go timer outlet dot start this will start the timer now, if we run our app, we can see how this works. Uh, so it doesn't want that date there. Just delete that and run our app again. So our app opens up. As you can see, it has that uh, time that we put in up here in, in our time zone. And then, of course, we can put our button and we have a countdown. Um, just another thing I want to highlight with the date, of course, you can change the settings so you can add day week, month, and year that you're counting down by. Again, we can update that countdown. Um, and that's a pretty quick overview of the date and the, object, uh, the date and the timer objects. 
So in the next video, I'm going to go through the map object, how you can display maps, how you can set the position of maps, and um, how you can do just generally do things with maps.